we are in a low growth world, except for, you know, China, India, and a few other places. And your great growth, your growth rate in Mexico is something we envy. We're at sort of 2%, you're at 4 or 5%, uh, and so on. So what's this about? My feeling was that uh, how do I really grow? Well, the answer normally is, let's grow the way we grew before, which means that you had one or two strategies, and that's how you became successful. And you know what? You're continuing those two strategies, and they ain't going to work anymore. It's a different world. It's an empowered consumer world, and so on and so forth. So here are my eight strategies. Now, by the way, each of those strategies, there's about a hundred books on each of those. So the purpose of this book is to say, sit down with your management, your circle, your senior management, take one strategy at a time and say, are we doing that? Because it has companies being described for each strategy that are using that strategy well. The first way to grow is to be a better at taking share away from your competitors. Right? It's attacking. How do you, whether it's a recession or not, how do you win some market share? The second way is how do you build more committed customers and stakeholders? They love you. You're not going to lose. The, the retailer will keep giving you that much space for your, your Campbell soup or whatever. And the suppliers, you've chosen the best ones, and, and, and they work beautifully with you and your customers just want to continue to buy from you. What's the science and art of loyalty? The third is, what can you do to empower your brand so you can say it's a power brand? Not just a brand in name, but a power brand. What do we know about branding? What, wh how did a coffee shop do that? Starbucks. I mean, there was always coffee, and suddenly, Oh, I know what it is. They have a different mantra. It isn't about a rich coffee. It's about a rich, rewarding coffee experience. Their stores deliver more than just coffee. So that's the third way, powerful brand. The fourth is learn how to be innovative, how to really be a powerful innovator. And by the way, I'm not just talking about that incremental innovation where Campbell soup puts out a artichoke soup and uh, you know a carrot soup that's easy to do fine but I'm talking about what I would call a new business model how about a new business model how about inventing Federal Express remember it was impossible to get something shipped to you by 1030 tomorrow morning how about a new library by the way, a lot of libraries are closing now because books are going to be saw, will be downloaded, e-books. What do you do with the library? Well, I know of a city that's turning the library into a community center and resource centers with all kinds of video uh, availabilities and advisors and how to put together photos. And you understand we need new business models. The bookstore, the bookstore is a brand new idea. The idea of having coffee at the bookstore, hearing lectures at night, being open from 9 in the morning to 11 at night, seven days a week. So business model in innovation, to me, is where you should be working. And then there's also marketing innovation. Marketing innovation. Do you know, what about Groupon? I'm sure in Mexico you have not coupons, but also Groupon a whole new way of marketing. So that's a chapter. How do you manage innovation? How do you become an innovative firm? Then I move to the idea of internationalizing, where the theme is, you want to grow? Go to where the growth is. Don't stay in a low growth area. Go to where they grow. Now, it may be too late to go to China, where there's faster growth. Maybe you should go to Cambodia, 
Vietnam, but go to where the growth is. Then the next idea is, well, there's a, another way to grow, just acquire another firm. Acquisitions, mergers, al joint alliances. By the way, if you study a company like uh, Hewlett Packard, you'd find that they've acquired about some hundreds of companies over their history. Be very careful of acquisition. Half of the acquisitions are disasters. Sometimes they're ego trips. So I have to tell in, uh, in that chapter what it takes to do acquisition smartly. And then what about growing by building a um, outstanding reputation for social responsibility? When all the, your competitors are sort of indifferent or average at giving and caring about the planet, you stand out by going thoroughly green and so on, getting your costs down in the process as well, but that you, showing that you care about the triple bottom line, people, planet, and profits, not just profits. And the last one is government will always be spending money, our money, on things like better roads, uh, airports, um, and, and bridges, and so on. So why don't you know there's always money being spent there how about you becoming good at working with government and with what we call public-private partnerships? That's, this is a new rage. Government used to do everything with, its, with the money, with a bidding process. Now there are public-private partnerships, including NGOs, as part of them. And, and there's a lot of growth from there. So this, I don't want to, I'm not saying this to sell my book, I'm just saying that there's two themes. One is make sure you defend your business, which Calkins talks about, and then if you have the energy, grow your business. <laughs>